Hey guys, you Psy killers will already know that there's a huge disparity between the genders in STEM fields, particularly in engineering. Only one in five engineers is a woman, and this sucks because engineers solve the world's biggest problems. They do things like reverse engineer the brain and try and stop nuclear proliferation and come up with solutions for climate change. And so the more diverse and out of the box ideas and opinions we can have, the better we'll be able to solve those problems. So why do we still have so few women in engineering? Well, researchers think that our culture might play a part. Research from the Gina Davis Institute shows that in primetime television, there are 71 characters that work in science, technology, engineering, and math. That's awesome. But only 15 of them were women, and all of those characters worked in the soft sciences. There was none in the hard sciences, no mathematicians, no physicists, and no engineers. But here at Psyche, we wanted to change that, and I wanted to share with you a secret project we've been working on over the December-January break. It's called the Next MacGyver Competition. Now, you guys remember MacGyver. He's that guy from the 80s with the mullet who can build a bomb out of nothing but gaffer tape and his Swiss Army knife. Well, the National Academy of Engineering have decided to bring MacGyver back to our televisions, but instead of being a dude, he'll be a kick-ass engineering lady. Now, the really cool news is that we here at PsyQ, Beck, my producer, and I have been asked to write a pilot for the Next MacGyver series. I can't share with you too many details of the show because we're still talking to studios and we're working with our co-creator Roberto Orchi, who's the mind behind some of the most awesome sci-fi series ever. He helped create or co-write shows like Fringe and Scorpion and Star Trek and Transformers and Xena Warrior Princess, one of my personal heroes. Side note while we're talking about kick-ass women, we also got to meet America Ferreira, who was one of the judges of the competition and she is awesome. But what I can share with you is our winning pitch from the next MacGyver competition. Now, because we're still in development, we would love to hear any of your ideas, favorite episodes of MacGyver, any sort of stuff that you would like to see on television, let us know in the comments below. They say you should never do your pitch in the middle of a lineup. And there's 12 of us today. <laughs> and I'm number six. So thanks, guys. Not true. <laughs> Designing, making, and playing that is the brand that engineering should have for 15 year olds today. When I was 15 years old, I went to my high school career fair and I went over to the engineering table. I'm not gonna lie, I went over to the engineering table because true to form, it was like 100% guys over there and I was like, this looks like a great place to spend the rest of my college year. <laughs> but I went to the engineering table and I was like, engineering, what's that all about? And they were like, well, engineering is about physics. Do you like physics? And I was like, nope. <laughs> and thus ended my engineering career. <laughs> and now I get to work with young girls. And I went and asked them at YouTube, hey, guys, what's stopping you guys from getting into engineering? One girl told me about how embarrassed she felt getting up on stage in front of her whole school to accept an award and how she'd stopped entering competitions after that. Another girl told me about how uncomfortable it was for her in her advanced math class because she was one of only two girls. And mostly they talked about this ridiculous dichotomy that we still have between the type of girls they wanted to be, like cool and popular, and what Julianne was saying, the type of girls that we stereotype as being the ones that are engineers. So how can we, I, I wish we could go up to girls and be like, hey, do you like designing stuff? Do you like making stuff? Yeah, that's engineering. You're already comfortable with it. You're already doing it. And I feel like if we could do that, we would have so many more young girls picking engineering. So how do we do that? How do we get them comfortable with this idea? Well, I'd like to introduce you to Emily. Ironically, she's not on the screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> Emily is a 15-year-old girl. She's pretty. She's popular. She, oh, there she is. She's pretty, she's popular. She is the daughter of the town mayor and a beauty queen. So she's kind of living a life of privilege. High school is pretty much awesome for Emily. Until one day, she accidentally burns down the high school auditorium during the science and engineering competition. <laughs> and she's faced with the ultimate teenager dilemma, expulsion or joining the high school science and engineering club also known amongst her peers as the Social Suicide Club. So this is a fish out of water story. It's like Ugly Betty 
but in reverse. Now it's the cool popular kid that has to kind of make her way amongst these crazy science and engineering nerds. And we see Emily during the course of the first season, like kind of enjoying the SEC club a little bit. She is helping them with her unique perspective on their mission to become first at first. And I swear when I wrote this, I didn't know there was gonna be people from first in the room today. <laughs> Well done, guys. This is for you. <laughs> so they're trying to become first at first. And as she gets more involved in helping, those, in helping the club, she starts spending less time at yoga with her friends and less time going on shopping trips. And she asks herself these same questions that many 15-year-old girls ask themselves. Will I still be cool if I show my enthusiasm for this robotics contest? Will Adam Jenkins in fifth period still like me if I beat him in math? Well, should I be the type of person that my parents and friends expect me to be? Or should I be the person that I want to be? I wanted this to be a high school drama with the positive and fun and bright elements of Glee. But instead of singing about their problems and the show tunes being the thing that gets everyone in each week, I wanted them to engineer solutions to their problems and have those badass elements of burn notice that gets people in each week. Emily and her friends do really cool stuff. Like they start the high school bonfire with nothing but a battery and a gum wrapper. <laughs> and yes, you can do that, YouTube it. <laughs> or uh, I wanted also to have Emily doing the stuff that is engineering in her world. So when her high, high heel breaks, and for most girls this would be a crisis situation, when her high heel breaks she uses her knowledge of materials engineering to fix it and build a better pair. Or when she's trying to take a selfie with her friends and you, her arm isn't quite long enough to fit everyone in the shot, this is a real problem and we've all faced it. <laughs> she whips up a selfie stick out of nothing but a hairpin and a stick of gaffer tape. Like, who doesn't wish they could do that? So I wanted, I wanted, I imagined girls tuning in each week being like, I wonder what cool shit we're gonna learn how to engineer this week. <laughs> they keep coming back. So that's what SEC is all about. To me, this is an opportunity to reach girls when they're right at that time in their life when they're trying to figure out who they wanted to be and what they wanted to become and showing them, like, we totally understand that you want to be cool and popular and that's awesome and you can be smart as well and those two things aren't mutually exclusive and that they can be creators and not just consumers and that if they're comfortable creating stuff with a Swiss army knife or a nail file, those are both equally valid ways of engineering their world. Thank you. Any questions? America? Um, oh no, I, I totally regret the ugly video. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, wonderful presentation. I, um, I enjoyed your comparison of it to Freaks and Geeks in your, um, in your treatment. I love Freaks and Geeks. The problem with Freaks and Geeks is it was canceled after one season. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. so my question for you is who is the audience for this show? And when you think about where you would tune in to watch this show, do you, do you have an idea of where this show might thrive and where it would find its audience? Yeah, I think the primary audience for this is teenage girls. This is who I wanted to reach. But like Glee, I, Glee was great because it had strong adult characters as well. So someone who's my age in their like late 20s can enjoy it just as much as someone who's 15 years old can enjoy it. So in this, I developed strong teen characters. And even adults, we've already been, we've all been teenagers. We remember what it's like. But there's also strong adult characters in there as well. Her parents and her mentors and the school principal are strong characters. So I imagine this being most popular amongst the kind of young adult and teen audience, <laughs> but also that adults could enjoy it too. Yeah, great question. Great, thank you. All right, Roberta. Um, when, one of the things I wrote down when you were speaking was to be smart or not to be. <laughs> and uh, is smart contrary to sexy? Are those in conflict? Is that the point of the show to figure out what the middle line is? Is that is that the point, yeah. or or not in your mind? To to me, yeah. I've been that girl where I'm like I want to be really pretty and I don't want people to see me as smart, but I also kind of like being smart and I'm enjoying this stuff. And I was surprised to hear that that's still happening in high school. That people sometimes feel ostracized for being smart, and that they're. What about more, the flip side? Can they be both? Yeah. I think this is, this is what I wanted this character to be, to be both, to show teenage girls, like you can be pretty, you can be cool, and you can be smart, and you can enjoy engineering as well. You're already enjoying it, you just don't realize. Thank you. Great.
Our third winner is Jade Lovell for SECs. Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching SciQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.